All right, so next, and I think this is going to be kind of our last step here, um, we are going to add the game over screen that shows up at the end. So to do that, I'm going to go into my backdrops right here and click on the backdrops tab to actually view the backdrop. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and let's see, add a new, choose a new backdrop, but don't click this, just kind of hover over it and go ahead and click this option for paint so that we have a blank backdrop. Then I'm going to go back to my nebula right here and I'm going to click copy. And then under the backdrop I just created, the blank one, I'm going to click that and click paste. Okay, so now I have that same nebula background except over the background I want to use the text tool. I'm going to click right here. And I want it to say game over. So I'm going to pick this pixel font because it kind of looks like old school gaming font. I'm going to use white as my color and I'm going to type in there game over exclamation point. Okay, I'm going to enter. And then at this point, I should be able to drag it bigger so that it takes up the whole screen or more of the screen at least. Okay. All right, so there's my game over screen. That's ready to go. Um, except one more thing, I'm going to go back to the first background backdrop. I'm going to rename it Nebula 1. And then the second one is going to be called Nebula 2. Okay, so now I want to go back into my sprites. I'm going to check out the first predator or my predator sprite right here, the ghost. I'm going to go back into code. And I want to add right here. So if time equals zero, then um, stop all, meaning all the sprites will stop moving. But also, under the looks code blocks, I'm going to use this one where it says switch backdrop to Nebula 2. So when the time equals zero, my backdrop is going to switch to Nebula 2. Now, I don't want it to... Um, stay as Nebula 2. Well, actually, we'll get to that in a second. So what else? Uh, the other things I want to happen is I want all of my sprites to disappear um, when the game over screen shows up. And that way, none of them are blocking the words game over. So I'm going to go back here to um, events. And it's going to we're going to use this one. When backdrop switches to Nebula 2. So this is going to be our third line of code for the Predator. And when backdrop switches to Nebula 2, then I'm going to go up here to looks, and we're just going to use hide. So it's going to hide that sprite. However, um, we don't want him to stay hidden forever. So we do need to make sure that he shows up again when we click the green flag, like for, you know, if we're going to play another time. So I'm going to drag this block that says show right up here. Okay. All right, so we also want our prey, or in this case gobo, to disappear when the backdrop switches. So again, I'm going to go to events when backdrop switches. So this is the second line of code for um, our prey. Gobo. So when backdrop switches to, make sure you have it, Nebula 2, that's the right one. Um, then under looks, we're going to use hide. And same thing, um, let me just show you what I mean by this. So chasing him around, chasing him around, and now the time's up. Okay, and then if I push the green flag again, this guy reappears, our predator, but our prey does not. So that's why with the predator, I used this show block under looks, and I put it at the very beginning so that when we click the green flag, all of our sprites show up again. 
You also may have noticed that this game over background stayed on um, when we click the green flag again. So we need to make it so that it goes back to our first um, backdrop. So I'm going to go back into the predator sprite, in this case the ghost, and I'm going to use the switch backdrop block again, but I'm going to put it at the very beginning. So when the flag is clicked, I not only want my timer to reset, but I also want the backdrop to switch back to Nebula 1. Alrighty. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that out. So my backdrop switched, chasing little gobo around, and racking up our Eaton score, and then game over. And when I click the green flag, everything starts over. So that's exactly what we want. Now one more thing that I want to change is I'm not a big fan of the fact that um, I like that the ghost chases my cursor when the cursor is away from it, but when it's on the cursor, he moves too quickly. So over here where it says touching mouse pointer, then I'm going to go ahead and actually hide the ghost when the mouse pointer is touching him. So this is optional. And if you don't mind the fact that um, he kind of glitches out without this, you can get rid of that completely. So he does glitch out when you just keep your cursor on him, but if that doesn't bother you, then you can just get rid of that whole if-then block altogether. But if you don't like that he glitches out like me, you add this if-then block and you have options. So I'm going to use hide. Let me show you what that looks like. So he's chasing my cursor, chasing my cursor, and if I want him to chase faster, I would increase right here where it says move three steps. Um, and then notice when my cursor goes on him, he goes away. So if my cursor is right on him, he completely goes away. And I kind of like it like that. Okay, so I think that's it. That's all I'm going to do on here. Um, if you want, I would suggest that you add more prey in here. So you'd add more sprites. And you can actually copy and paste Gobo or, you know, your first prey, you can copy and paste the code for him right onto your next sprite. So you'd use Command C or Control C, and then you'd go click on your next sprite and just do Command V as in Vampire or Control V. Um, you could also create some sprites where the score actually goes down if you touch them. Um, and you would do the same thing that we did for Gobo here, except instead of change eaten by one, you would do change eaten by negative one, or whatever number you want to use. All right, thank you very much. Hope you have fun creating this game.